Okay, this is a demonstration of grounding. And what I'm going to demonstrate here is the dangers of having an ungrounded system. I have a motor here with a ground lead attached to it. Now this ground lead is coming from our plug. And if we look at a plug or receptacle, the third prong is our ground. Looking at the outlet, the hole is our ground. That's where that third prong goes in. This little phrase that I use for the guys in the class, short chicks are hot. Then they can always remember that the short side of this outlet is the hot side. So it's polarized. It matters which way you plug it in. This electrical system is grounded. Everything metal, this box, is all tied to ground. This plug, we'll, we'll plug this in, this is tied to our motor. This is where we have our ground lead attached to the frame of the motor. So the frame is grounded like it's supposed to be. And we have the hot leg tied to one side of the motor feed and the neutral tied to the other right here. We have an outlet tester. This tester, you plug it in and the lights indicate how the circuit is that you're connected to. This is my switch box. This mushroom switch allows me to trigger this board from a distance. This piece of wire right here is our breaker. And this is a human being's heart. If I trigger the motor, the motor's running, the motor's grounded properly. You can see that we have correct wiring. This tester is plugged directly into this outlet. We're proving that the whole system is wired right. Our motor's also plugged into this outlet, so our motor's wired correctly. And this little switch right here is tied to our ground for the whole system. So if I turn this switch off, you can see from the indicator lights that now we have an open ground issue. If I turn this back on, we now have our returned ground. Okay, I'm going to take our tester, which is a three-pronged device, and plug it into our adapter which most people then use to plug into a two-prong outlet, totally dismissing this ring, which is supposed to be tied to ground. And as you can see, the light is telling you we have an open ground issue. So whatever I've plugged into this adapter, my three-prong device, is now ungrounded. I'm going to take this alligator clip and attach one end to that little ring that I pointed out. And the other end, I'm going to touch to ground. This box is grounded. So my system's energized. Notice again, ungrounded. When I touch ground with the alligator, now it says proper wiring. Ground removed, ground in place. Now I'm going to remove the ground from that motor. Now this frame is ungrounded and that motor runs fine. Now you can picture this as being the frame of a refrigerator or a pot machine ungrounded. So if we had a problem with ground, let's say we cut the third prong off or we used one of those adapters, your refrigerator or pot machine would run just fine. So with this item wired correctly and the frame is grounded, I'm going to cause an intentional problem with this system. This is an alligator clip that is also attached to my hot leg coming from that plug that attaches to this motor. I'm going to attach that hot leg right onto the frame of the motor. This is like an issue with a pot machine or refrigerator. It's wired correctly. We are in a properly grounded system and vibration has wore out the uh, hot leg and it's touching the frame. Now, Because that frame is grounded, the breaker should do its job. So I'm going to energize the system and try to energize the motor with this short circuit right on the frame. So the breaker did its job and tripped open. We have a device, let's say refrigerator, ungrounded. 
ungrounded because somebody used an adapter or cut off that third prong, which is ground. The hot leg is born due to vibration. It's touching the frame of that device. We didn't get a breaker trip because of the removal of ground. So this system runs just fine. One hand of this victim is touching the frame. They're still fine because no other part of their body is grounded. But I have this other hand which is going to touch ground under those circumstances. This is what would happen to that person's heart. Do it now. Do it now. And now we have the same exact situation with the frame of the system ungrounded, the hot legs worn and touching the frame. The person's left hand is also touching the frame. And before, current went through their heart to ground, which is where their right hand is touching on the conduit. In this situation, we have a GFCI instead of a regular outlet. Let's energize the system and see what happens. The GFI tripped, disconnecting power, saving that person's heart. Let's take a closer look at this GFCI. You probably have one in your bathroom or by a sink at home. And GFCI or GFI has a red reset button and a black trip button. You can see ours is wired correctly. We have our tester plugged in. Most of these testers have a little black button on the top. And if you press that, you cause an intentional trip on that GFCI. And then to reset the GFCI, you press in the red button. And that resets the system. Pressing this black button does the same exact thing as that little black button on the tester. It causes an intentional trip and it has to be reset. So with this motor plugged into this GFI, what it's doing is monitoring the amount of current going to the motor, through the hot leg, through the motor windings, back through the neutral, back to this outlet. Those two should be equal, the current through the hot leg and the neutral. If there's an imbalance, that's what trips this GFCI. We had an imbalance situation when the current was going through the hot leg, down to the motor, was going through the motor frame, then through the person's left hand, through their heart, to ground. It had an alternative path to ground instead of going through the neutral. So the GFI did its job and saved that person's heart.